Okay, so today's big idea will be Pinterest. Uh, this is a this is this is by some accounts the third or fourth largest social network, and also by accounts the third or fourth most important social network to be on. The most important one would be Facebook for the sheer numbers, for its momentum, for its reach, uh, and then after that, even for number two, there's there's a battle there. You could say Twitter or Google Plus. Twitter because it's so spontaneous, it's so open. It has, of course, also 300 million users. Or Google Plus, which uh, has also hundreds of millions of users. It's integrated with Google search and such, but um, not as well known outside of most circles, pun intended. Uh, and so then the next one, fourth place, um, would be Pinterest. That's also got a few hundred million. I, I haven't looked up the numbers recently, but let's say between 100 and 200 million some place around there and growing it's it's the it's one of the up and coming ones and we talked previously in general about demographics facebook demographics it's just about everyone because everyone uses it google plus is mostly tech savvy mostly male and uh twitter what did we say about twitter young whatever young means but under 40 35 or so um, it seems to cross gender lines. Pinterest studies show, demographics show, that the main target audience for Pinterest is women. So if your product, your organization, your cause uh, targets uh, women as a demographic, Pinterest would be a very good one to get into. And so Pinterest shares many aspects of the traditional social networks. We're going to see the ability to comment, to like, to share to post, just like every social network. The differences are that it's much more visual. Um, behind this login screen here, there's a bunch of pictures. And usually when I try to show this to people, I get prevented from going very far because Pinterest nowadays, they are very, very uh, pushy about you creating an account as soon as possible. Because I want to show Pinterest.com slash Mashable. And I want to show a little bit about what the account has. But as soon as I start to look at it, it'll then pop up. Sign in. And if I ignore it and keep going, it'll pop up even higher. And at a certain point, the pops are so high, I can't do anything unless I sign in. But we've talked a little bit about Mashable. And they've got a presence on all the networks. And so here they've got 1.4 million followers. That's, a, that's their audience. That's a, a demographic. They pin something, they post something, and then all 1.4 million could see it. That doesn't mean all 1.4 million will click the buy button, or the subscribe button, or the follow button. If we think about it in 1% terms, 1% of 1.4 million is uh, 10,000? 1,000? Anyone want to do the math? Let's say 10,000. 10,000 out of 1 million. That's still a lot of potential customers, a lot of potential eyeballs that actually follow through with the process or the goal of your presence. So the big thing about Mashable is you share pictures, mostly. You can share video, but it's not as common. It's pretty much, pretty much pictures. Uh, I'm not sure about sharing animated pictures, it, since I don't seem to remember, it sort of feels like you don't share animated pictures because I don't remember them popping out. But when we do it, we'll, when we log in, we'll check. But it's pictures. And so they've posted or they pinned 14,000, 14,500 pins, 14,500 pictures. That doesn't mean it's all of their own original pictures, though because the big part of social media is the social part. They could be repinning, they could be sharing someone else's pictures. And kind of getting back to the idea earlier about, well, is that allowed? Um, the sort of expectation is, well, if you're posting something on a social network and it's not private, if it's not explicitly set to private, then it's public. And you may or may not agree with that. But basically, if you post something on Twitter, there's not much to stop someone else to share it. Well, you probably want that. If you're posting a photo of your product 
on Twitter, you want people to share that photo so more people can see it and potentially more people can buy it. Pinterest, I want to share a photo, I want to pin a photo of my latest product so that other people repin it and share it to more people and reach even more people. And maybe I'll sell the product, get a subscription, get a follower, whatever I'm trying to do. So because it's all about pictures and they can be lost quickly, social media can be very ADD. You want to create pin boards or like folders to organize your pins. Tech and gadgets, infographics, the best apps, tips and tricks for social media. Social media, I don't know what the difference is. But they've made these folders. They've made these pin boards to organize particular pictures into particular topics. So Pinterest, let's turn over here and see the ancient version of Pinterest. This pin board right here. This pin board right here at Pinterest. Someone pinned this, you know. And then over here, there's a few papers that relate to each other, project management and network academy. Those could be together, those could be together as a particular pin board. Or let's say I have a board here for employees and a board here for customers. So different pin boards. And like that, there's a board over there and a board over here. So different content, different boards. And both of those boards are in this room, which would be this account. So the digital has, a, has an antecedent in the, uh, in the analog, in the real. And so let's say then someone from another room comes to this room and they see that flyer there. Well, because it's digital, they can take a copy of it and pin it on their own board and now more people see it. That's exactly what's happening on Pinterest. So all of these followers, some amount of them are taking a pin and resharing it from their profile and not taking in the terms of stealing and not taking in the terms of removing. I really should say sharing because that's what happens. This is shared to another pin board and therefore it could reach more of an audience. So as I said, as I start to scroll down, it's going to pop up. There's more to see. Why not log in? And I say, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I keep ignoring it, such as humor, DIY inspiration. Do you guys know what DIY means? Do it yourself. That's a very popular keyword nowadays, DIY. You can apply that to everything. DIY uh, baby strollers, DIY um, food preparation, DIY um, medical advice. So it's do-it-yourself. So I'm bringing that up because I'm going to recommend that when you do your boards, think about if you can use any sort of DIY keyword. So I'm a, I've got Victor's Bakery. And we'll talk about specifically what I can post as Victor's Bakery, perhaps. But one of the things I might think about is DIY recipes. Since it's such a popular thing to search DIY, my board could be found with these recipes where they can do it themselves. Brain food, food and drink, books and quotes. So there's no limit to how many of these you can make. And then at a certain point, you've seen the free preview enough, Simon. Uh, you can make as many boards as you want. You can put as many pins as you want. Exactly. Well, we'll get to that to see what happens. Technically, yesterday, and. It, I mean, it's minimal, but it will say, you know, something like can be found on Etsy.com. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the description here, which, yes, is going to be minimal, but the main content of it, I think more people look at the actual picture a little bit less at this text because their culture of Pinterest is much more visual. So, yes, we will see there's a part, a part to add text, but I wouldn't add three, four, five, six, twelve sentences, people are going to see what's in the picture. And also what I see sometimes is people make a picture that has text. I can do that, but we'll get to that. But the main idea is think about it in more terms of pictures than anything else.
Yes. Well, on the previous classes, I talked about that Mashable is a website that uh, displays uh, social media news and technology news, and they have a presence on Mashable.com, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, everything. So it's just a company that is using uh, Pinterest very well and all the social networks. And so, let me show you an example. That's obviously an account that has a lot of people, 1.4 million. Maybe one video will have that many as you keep working. But let me show you an example of a particular... Um, uh, of a particular uh, colleague that has, that has really good experiences in, in Pinterest. Uh, so we can check his profile, pinterest.com slash... Uh, Mosher13. Every time I mention him, he gets more followers, so I'm happy to do so. I'm happy to do so, but he's a college, he was a student of mine at Southwestern College. He started his own uh, web design and development company. He's been doing pretty well in it. And then um, um, he's on all the networks too. He's a, he's a dilettante in a positive way, like me. I like to try out all, all, all networks here and there. I signed up for a bunch of networks that I haven't really used very recently, and I feel guilty. I should go back and hang out on them with my friends there, but there's only so many hours in the day. But I try to learn a little bit about all of them because who knows which is the next one that's going to be a big hit. And if it really is big enough, then I include it in a class. So Mosher13 is his address, but he's Chuck, Chuck Dow, and he's in San Diego, and he's got his own website, chuckdow.com, where you go to hire him as a web designer. But let's think about why, he, why or how he's using social media. He wants more clients. He wants to get hired to make websites. So the traditional way would be he would go maybe to um, trade shows and such and give out his business card, and some amount of people will eventually take him up on his offer and hire him. Well, traveling to the trade shows is expensive and time-consuming. Social media, then, comes into a, big, uh, into a big part of the strategy. He gets on Twitter, he gets on Pinterest, he gets on Facebook, and there he's doing the networking. There he's connecting with potential people that need a website and customers and such. And there he's giving out his virtual business cards. Or there he's showing his chops that he knows how to make websites. And then that could lead to um, more clients. So on Pinterest specifically, he's got content that he's sharing, infographics, cool photos, great web design, illustrations, fun stuff, cool tech stuff, tattoos, logos, just crazy but cool. So he's posting a lot of stuff in a variety of topics. That's to catch, that's to cast a wide net. Some audiences will be interested on some of the pins and some audiences will be interested in others. So if he's, if he's game to make websites for just about any company, then it would make sense that he is posting content to architectural potential clients tattoo artists, potential clients, you know, potential clients that want good logo design. So he's putting content for all of those that could be searching. And you might think, well, he, he made all of those logos, he made all of those tattoos, he made all of those origami figures. No, he is going to share as much as he can of his original stuff but then it's perfectly okay to repurpose, to reshare the content of other people's, of other people's Pinterest, of other people's websites. Because I'm not sure if I fully mentioned it on the previous classes, but you don't want to always be in me, me, me mode. You don't always want to be in sell, sell, sell mode. Every tweet that you put out or every Facebook post or every pin shouldn't always be about look at me, buy my product, here's my new product, etc. You have to mix it up here and there. Fun stuff, irrelevant stuff, um, weird stuff in addition to the serious stuff or the sales stuff. And a good ratio is if you think 80% original to 20% repurposed. Her post. 
content on all the networks. So on Twitter, most of the time I'm going to be tweeting original stuff, my own picture, maybe some text, maybe my own video. Um, there's a huge amount of things I can post on Twitter. Same thing Facebook. On Pinterest, since it's mostly about picture, uh, pictures, well, I'm going to be focused on focusing in on taking photos of my own products, maybe of us working in the office, of maybe uh, happy clients uh, after we did a good job. 80% of the time. The other 20% I could take other people's work, share other people's work. Unrelated stuff. Stuff that doesn't relate to the company to keep it fresh so that it's not always about selling. So that you're not always a salesman on your on your uh, on your profiles. And so it seems to have worked for him because if we look at the top on his statistics, he has 35,000 followers. So yeah, I showed you Mashable, which is a big name in this industry. One million, one and a half million. Here's someone that took my class and lives down in Chula Vista. 35,000 followers. So a real person, not these nebulous people that uh, live in and work in New York City. Someone real. And then, um, you know, we're talking to him. So I asked him point blank, how did you become a superstar on, on Pinterest? And he says, just posting targeted content, posting stuff that people care about. Uh, the illustrators posting stuff about illustrations, the web designers posting about web design, people that are looking for infographics posting infographics, and that's one of his largest boards. So the point of also showing Chuck, not only to, to make you jealous, but to see that um, what is he doing, what is he doing that you could possibly do in your own, in your own vein. In your own style. So th this has come up again already. Mashable had a pin board called infographics. If you don't know what infographics are, let me show you an example. If you try to click, maybe it'll let us see it. Ten performance review tips. This could have easily had been a very boring document with bullet points. A very boring but informative word document with bullet points. Or maybe a slightly less boring PowerPoint. But here it's set up as an infographic which is colorful. First bullet point. Come prepared with a little graphic and some text. Have key questions ready during the interview. Bullet point two. Do a peer review. Ask questions before the review and etc. So an infographic is a graphical representation of something boring, a graphical representation of some data or information that can be presented in a more interesting way. So cure your shopping cart abandonment issues. Here it's going to talk about that I guess $3.3 trillion are lost annually because people go through a shopping cart and then at some point abandon it. And they, and they don't follow through. So $3, three trillion dollars worth of losses because people don't go all the way through. Well, this is going to give you some tips how to prevent that or how to control that. And that could have been, again, very boring bullet points or a... Um, uh, PowerPoint presentation that might not have gotten a lot of traction, but here as a, as a well-designed graphic, it could be reshared, repinned. It'll tell you it'll tell you how many people um, shared it once we were able to log in. but He's posting content, some of them he made himself, most of them he's repurposed, but he's reaching an audience, and the point of that is he's also showing. Uh, here's all the tools for you to make your own website, perhaps, but hire me because I know what I'm doing. So as Victor's Bakery, I could be posting a bunch of the photos of our own products, our own cookies and pastries and everything, but I'm going to reshare an official tasty-looking photo from Oreo or 
Mrs. Stover's or whoever. And that'll hopefully help me build an audience. As I build an audience, well, I have more people that could possibly see my my pins, my tweets, my posts on Facebook or Google Plus to ultimately hopefully get me more clients, followers, uh, sales, etc. Like he has right here specifically his own my Instagram photos. He's on Instagram as well. He's posted some. We can't see it here, but that uh, has 314 pins that has followers. And when we log in, we'll see this. But we can. Uh, the thing that's a little confusing for beginners is you can follow a profile. So you can follow a person or a company. That's normal. We know that from other days. But what's new is you can follow individual boards. If you want to follow Chuck, you don't have to follow all of his boards because you may not care at all about tattoos or Star Wars. But you do care about logos and inspiration. So you can follow individual boards. You don't have to follow a whole profile. Same thing for yours. When you create, when we create our profiles, that's why I'm saying create as many as you want and populate it with content because that way you're casting a wider net to get followers. Some followers will care about two or three of your boards. Maybe some followers will care about all 12 of your boards. And so that's why you want to post content on a regular basis, like every network. So this board itself has 1,200 followers. His infographics board had like 33,000. So a lot of people are following his board. And we'll see uh, that Pinterest will help us to some degree in that if, you, if one of your pins is liked, it will Pinterest will suggest more of your pins to people so that you can get more followers, so that you can start building an audience. It's going to snowball. In the beginning, it might be a little bit of an uphill climb to get some followers, but then as you have followers, you're going to see it's going to snowball, and you get more and more, and then you'll have 30,000 before you know it. Yes? Is there a difference between, okay, um, you're, you're representing a business, and you want to do this to show what your business has. Uh, on the other hand, you have your personal interests, you want to do something separate, you just want to follow things. You don't really have anything to show. You want to separate things. Is there like a big difference between There is. We're going to see that it's similar to, um, to, to Google Plus and Facebook in that we can have a personal profile or a business page. So yes, you can create one just for personal and following and never posting anything. And then we create the business one where we would want to post and follow. Question? Sure, one place that you can go is pixabay.com, P I X A B A Y.com. This is a website that's full of stock images. So that means images that are free for you to use, that are legal for you to use. And you can easily do a search on Yahoo or Google or Bing or whatever and find two million cat photos. But maybe one of those cat photos is copyrighted and we'll get into trouble using it. Well, if we go to a website that specifies having stock images or royalty-free images and that sort of thing, then we won't have that trouble. So you're not going to find two million cat pictures. You might only find 2,000 cat pictures. But still, you'll find the one most likely that could work great with your tweets. And the thing I like about them is that they also let you download the high quality versions, very high quality, uh, print quality. And because this is all free for you to use for whatever purpose, you could technically download these photos for print quality and make your company banner based on that photo. So that's one of the many places that are out there to search for appropriate images. Um, I found lots of them myself here for myself and my clients. 
and then there's always doing a search so if you go to a search engine you can search for anything but make sure you use the keyword stock image so funny cat pictures stock images stock images is the keyword you want to add to help you find these free images there's also royalty free images that's another keyword stock images royalty free images and also public domain images In theory, these photos are public domain images. I would want to click to confirm that it is. But if you go directly to a page where there, it's all about that, then you should be safe. OK, so um, we're going to create an account. How many of you currently have a Pinterest account? Okay, for those of you that do have a Pinterest account, how many of you have the business Pinterest account? There is a difference. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to show you how to create your, your, your business Pinterest account. If you had created an account wanting to use it for business, but you didn't go through the official process of creating a business account, we will be able to convert that account to the right account, because technically you created a personal account. And Pinterest wants people to use personal accounts and businesses to use business accounts. So we'll see how to convert it in a, in a little bit. But what you want to do is, if you're going to create a brand new account like me, what you want to do is, let's go back to Pinterest.com. Pinterest.com. And it says, OK, um, well, before we create the account, let's, let's look at something here, too. Your homepage graphic might change a bit, but mine says, she used Pinterest to step up her style. So if I refresh that, they use Pinterest to give their kids a head start. Let me pin that. Chef Curtis Stone uses Pinterest to dig into vegetable gardening. So here, it's just kind of an advertisement. Well, what's Pinterest for? He used Pinterest to dive deep. And they're talking in terms of these like nebulous, prosaic marketing terms. It's not literally going to tell you, use Pinterest to get sales. It's giving you a larger concept. She uses Pinterest to eat healthier. So I have a bakery. Most of the things that I have in my bakery, you wouldn't consider them health food, because why would you want to consider cookies health food? But some of my cookies and such might be healthier than the usual cookies. So thinking about this, I might have a pin board that says healthy versions of cookies. Healthy scones, etc. And I'm putting content in there for the people that are using Pinterest to eat healthy. I'm just showing you here is a little bit more inspiration. How can I use Pinterest? And notice these, these many of these are, are active, the active voice. He used Pinterest to redo his floors. She used Pinterest to think outside the classroom action verbs. She used Pinterest to step up her style. So we'll also think in that terms of active. When we create these boards, are we thinking about them in terms of what can a person do? Not really what a person can see or absorb. What can they do? With my cookie recipe board, people will be able to bake the perfect cookie. So maybe instead of when we create boards, maybe instead of simply calling it cookies, I could call it baking the perfect cookie because that will hopefully help us target the people that really are looking for something specific. Cookies is too generic. Baking the perfect cookie is more specific. Baking gluten-free cookies, right? Being active. This will make sense when we do it. But um, that's for a little bit of inspiration. It's going to ask you to create an account here. Don't do it this way, because this is going to create a personal account. We want to create a business account. See that? You should see the word business. Click there. Why 
password, the name and the new password or the one connected to your email? It doesn't know that password yet, so it's going to be a new one. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite gotten there yet, so just to confirm, you did click the business button down here, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you go to this next screen here, again, it's going to say, well, what's so good about using Pinterest for business? Get discovered by millions of people looking for the things to plan, buy, and do. So again, action, active words. And at the moment, you cannot sell your products directly through Pinterest unless you're a big company like Amazon and Target and stuff. Uh, at, at the moment, this is, this is being beta tested and so forth. This is being ironed out. The big companies will be the first ones that you will have a simple buy button, buy now button, right on your pin big companies. Eventually us smaller companies will have that too. Um, but at the moment we have to use most of these social networks in, in terms of we're using them as a form of advertising and marketing and we're going to guide people back to our website where we actually sell on our website. And notice right here, already have an account, convert it. So if you created an account as a personal before and instead of a business, go through the process of converting. But us, we're going to join as a business. Uh, I'm going to look at this spiel here just a little bit more. Yes? Okay. See, I wouldn't do that because I don't want my business email address to be the same as my personal one. Your business email as your personal Pinterest? Or what do you mean? Well, if I convert it, it will be attached to my personal email, right? Oh, that's true. But then you could go to the settings of that account and change to another email address. If I, if you've got, for example, if I have victorsbakery.com, most likely my service provider also has the ability for me to create email addresses. So I can have sales at victorsbakery.com. I don't want victorsbakery.gmail.com. That is very unprofessional. You want sales at victorsbakery.com. Contact at victorsbakery.com. Buy now at victorsbakery.com not buy now victorsbakery.com at yahoo.com you want your own domain on your email getting back to your point you will be able to change your email address in the settings so that it's no longer on your personal so get started tools success stories buyable pins not available on iPhone and iPad. Yeah, but for the big companies at the moment. Buyable pins let people buy things without ever leaving the Pinterest app. Which is, of course, great and terrible. Um, so, obviously, we're not Neiman Marcus, we're not Ethan Allen, we're not Macy's. These are the companies and a few others that have the ability for you to buy their pins directly from Pinterest. Eventually they'll let it go for us uh, smaller companies, but they're still testing it out. <coughs> Success stories. You might want to look at these at some point. How did Bob Vila, even though Bob Vila has had decades of exposure as a, as a do-it-yourselfer, um, his company, you know, needed to move to digital, to the on to the social media world, like everyone else. And you're not you're not a you're not guaranteed an audience in the digital world, even if you had a great audience in the real world. So here's a case study about how did the Bob Vila franchise transition from you know real life into Pinterest world. One of the things that's also useful to have as a business account, the reason to have a business account is because you'll be able to uh, look at uh, statistics of how how effective you're being. Uh, people pin your content, but as personal or business, 
but only as a business account will you see, you know, demographics of age and and um, gender and time of day and your most popular tweets and all of that. That then helps me figure out. Okay, I posted so far 20, uh, 20 pins. And I'm seeing that these two kinds of pins here are very popular. And I'm seeing that those two kinds of pins have this kind of picture and this kind of text. So that could help guide me to my future pins. So all of this data, analytics, statistics, all of these insights help me figure out how effective I'm being. And it's interesting, but even Pinterest themselves, which is a social network, is on the other social networks too. Pinterest has a Facebook. Pinterest has a Twitter. Pinterest has a Twitter. So that's true. I don't see LinkedIn here. Maybe they do somewhere in another screen because they don't want to overload it with every possible network. Because I don't see, I don't see Instagram. That's a very big one. I don't see Snapchat. I don't see Periscope. So it might be on some other screen because they just want aesthetically to show these ones so that their design looks good. But anyway, let's click Join as a business. It'll ask for an email address. So you want to add an email, create a password for your Pinterest account, add your business name, what's the business type. Not a lot to, to choose from, but you should be able to find the one that makes sense for you. If you've got a website, it's good to add your website address, uh, because later on we'll talk about how Pinterest's attribution feature is very powerful and built in. Again, if you don't know what that means, we'll talk about it. But the point is, you want to add your website address if you've got a website. Can you put your blog address instead? Yeah, your blog could be your website, so as long as you've got something to link to, that, that should work. So I'm going to use my, my usual Victor's Bakery, and I guess, let's see what fits into here. Brand, maybe, and retailer, or online marketplace, or local business. So hopefully you're able to choose one of these that makes sense for you. Let's say I'm a nonprofit organization trying to save the whales. Where would I fit in here? Thank you, brand. Oh, institution nonprofit. So if I had a website, I would add it and then click create account. So Pinterest, because it first started off for people to connect with each other, like every other network, and then later on figure out, well, we can't make much money that way. Let's start adding, having the ability for people, for businesses to use Pinterest, and then marketing and advertising. Uh, so this is still sort of a bit more for, for people. If you created a Pinterest account in the beginning a few years ago, when it was new, you created a Pinterest account, you logged in, and then it was a ghost town because you didn't have any connections, you didn't have any friends, you didn't follow anything, so you just have a blank screen, basically. You had to start to build uh, a following. You started to follow accounts to see content. Same thing with Twitter, same thing with Google+. But now the networks are getting better about creating a better experience for brand new users. We saw this in Twitter, and we see a version of it in Pinterest. I've logged in, and it says, here are various topics so that we can start to show you content so that your Pinterest is not a ghost town. You think, well, I don't care about that. I just want to put my stuff online to get people to find me. Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston is a very popular and very attractive actor that appeared in a Marvel 
comics movie that has gotten all the girls very interested in his acting abilities. And so he's popular enough literally that he's got his own category on Pinterest. That's why I asked. Jennifer Lawrence has one too. Batman does too. So you might think, well, why would I care about this? I'm putting my business online and I want people to uh, see my uh, see my wares and get followers and such. Yes, but this is still a good tactic and something important to do as a company. This is about the inspiration. What am I going to pin today? What am I going to pin next week? I'm running out of ideas. If you are following relevant accounts based on or relevant topics, based on the topic of your business, you could be getting inspiration about what others are doing. So, I've got a bakery, but I'm a small business. Um, so if I see small business, maybe I'll, I'll follow that. Let's see, recipes, yeah, my, I'll be posting about recipes, so I'll select that. Desserts, yeah, healthy snacks, yes. So I'm going to be selecting the topics that relate directly and tangentially to my business. Directly are, obviously, desserts, healthy snacks, recipes. Tangentially would be, well, I, I also want to learn about social media to, to better reach an audience as a, as a small business, maybe actually social media marketing. I kind of... It's, these two, I think, are very blurred together, but I see they are separated into different topics. Social media and social media marketing. I suppose this is the more business-oriented version of social media, and this is for like just regular people. But as a small business, well, I want to learn a little bit about social media marketing. I want to get inspiration. I want to do an. I want to. I've heard that infographics are good, but I don't know how to do one for my company, my bakery. Well, if I select infographics, I might get inspired, so that then I can create my own infographic for my own company. Yes. That says follow five topics. Is that just to get started, or you yeah. limited to five? You can do many more, definitely, but five at least to get started. And if none of these are, that are showing up here pique your interest, you can search a topic. What about cookies? Definitely. Cookies, decorated cookies, chocolate chip cookies, decorated sugar cookies, sugar cookies, Christmas cookies, baby shower cookies, and on. Halloween cookies. So I've selected some topics. My profile will not be a ghost town. Then it says, who do you want to follow? Choose a network to see who's here, then follow friends who share your interests. Um, this is just, again, trying to help you connect with profiles so that you're not seeing a ghost town. It's also useful to try to build an audience. So if you link your Twitter, if you link your Twitter to your Pinterest, it would then show you who's, which of your Twitter friends are also on Pinterest to connect, or which of your Facebook friends are also on Pinterest to connect. So just building more audience. I'm going to skip this, and if you do, you can still do it at another screen, but that's the concept here, that you connect with your friends and followers on one of these networks to kind of connect with them here on Pinterest. There's a very small nondescript skip button. I'm going to skip this, but you can do this if you'd like. And if you want to do it later, we have another screen in the settings where we can get back to it. Let's skip. Again, it says you're going to be missing out on everyone's latest projects and interests. Skip it. Get the Pinterest browser button. We're going to see that we can share to Pinterest, just like we can share to Twitter, to Facebook, Google+, Snapchat, Periscope, Meerkat, etc., etc., etc. We can share. One of the things that is different about Pinterest is it's got a little... Uh, what's the term for it again? Uh, 
widget or plugin or something where it attaches itself to your web browser. So if you want to share something quickly that you find on someone else's website or your own website, we can add the pin it button directly to your web browser. My web browser has this little Adobe Acrobat icon, but if I follow these steps, I can add the pin it button to my web browser so I can quickly pin. I found something cool, I can quickly pin it. I'm going to skip this because we can do it if we want to on a, another screen, but we're going to look at the different ways that you can share from your web browser, from your website, from your app, uh, lots of different ways. But I'm going to skip this. Again, it's going to say, without our button, you won't have an easy way to save recipes, project ideas, and other things you find around the web. We'll still be able to share, no problem. But here's just saying, you won't have an easy way to do it. That's fine. So here it's building a home feed based on these different topics I followed. I've logged in. This is my home feed. I'm seeing here a bunch of pins from a bunch of accounts I followed. Who did I follow? Not quite important to know who I followed, really. Just that I followed accounts related to important things for my business, such as how to use Snapchat for business. Someone pinned that. That sounds really useful. I want people to have that reaction with my stuff too, which of course we'll talk about how to get that reaction. But this is the point of following other accounts, other topics, to inspire you. What can you do on Pinterest or other networks? The 21 types of content we all crave. That's an infographic. Pretty boring one, but it gets the point across. Content that reminds us that life is short. Hmm. Content that reminds us that dreams can come true. Content that gives us faith to believe our bigger dreams. Content that reminds us that we matter. True facts about teens. Isn't a fact automatically true? So... Content, zucchini lasagna. Notice pictures, infographics. I'm not running into any animated graphics. I'm not running into any videos. It's pictures. And hopefully I'm getting inspiration and hopefully I'm seeing that really Maybe I think I can never shoot an amazing photo like that. It doesn't have to be look it doesn't have to look amazing and professional, but it should look enticing. You know, that's not an amazing photo right there. It's pretty obvious and straight on. It's creative the way it's set up and photographed. The the setup is creative, but the photography is kind of blah. As a photographer, you know, I'm seeing that it's kind of like the colors are kind of weak and such, but I'm ignoring it because I'm liking the photo. We're going to take a break in a moment to make sure that we've all got the account set up and then we'll get into it and look at some settings and some best practices and then about pinning of course, do's and don'ts and all of that, but it's uh, 1.40. Let's take a break until uh, 1.50. When we come back we'll, we'll keep learning about Pinterest. <laughs>